Hello everyone and welcome to this um, Social Europe video cast. My name is Robin Wilson. I'm the editor of Social Europe. And um, my guest today is uh, Bruno Coltre, um, who's a political scientist from Sciences Po in Paris and an expert on elections in France. And I'm talking to uh, Bruno uh, in the context of a project which is being supported by the Foundation for European Progressive Studies and the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, exploring the challenges facing social democracy in this decade. Welcome, Bruno. Welcome. Thank Let you. me begin, uh, Bruno, by talking about the uh, Parti Socialiste, the main force for social democracy in France in recent decades, and it certainly has not had its challenges to seek. In the 2017 presidential election, the outgoing president, uh, François Hollande, did not stand again, so unpopular had he become, for a second term, and the socialist candidate came fifth in the election. The party's uh, public funding was reduced and it had to sell its historic headquarters in Rue Sofrino in Paris. Uh, but this year, things got even worse as the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, who was well known, uh, contested the presidential election on behalf of the Socialist Party and failed even to secure 2% support. How have things come to this point, Bruno? Can you explain for our, our viewers and listeners why the Socialist Party has seen such a dramatic collapse in support? Obviously, you cannot explain such uh, collapses uh, because the Socialist candidate, she did less than 2% of the share of the vote. So you cannot explain such an amazing collapses, such an amazing uh, negative result with only one factor. It would be just too easy to attribute the situation to the candidates. I'm talking to the candidates at the plural because actually it is two elections five years ago with Benoit Hamon and this year with Anne Hidalgo, two very different candidates actually. So you cannot explain that just by the performance of the individual candidates. It is obviously the presidential election where the individual factor, the capacity of the candidates to, to, to fit with the expectations of the French citizens towards the role of the French president, you cannot explain just by that. Obviously, it is much more fundamental explanations. Certainly, one long-term explanation is that over the last decades, the left, and particularly the central left, uh, used to govern the country for many years, actually. If you take the last 30, 40 years, the Parti Socialist actually was running the country for many years. So it could be that we have a simple long-term explanation that when you, when you did govern the country for many years, at one stage maybe that you had, maybe that it is quite difficult to renovate the political message, maybe also that people have in their backs, in their minds, they have the, uh, the past, obviously. There is obviously another explanation, which is mid-term, not exactly long-term, but the mandate of François Hollande, the last socialist pre president that was elected in 2012, just before Macron, actually, with a lot of disillusion inside the left, with the left, and particularly the Socialist Party, amazingly divided on the economic issues. Uh, part of the left has a very negative evaluation of the last Socialist President mandate, telling that it was not the proper left, it was not the true left. It was too much preoccupied by uh, the uh, economic competition, uh, by the European also level, and you know that in France, the left is not completely united on the European question. Mm -hmm. Part of the left 
would like to get another Europe, which is Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the France Insoumise, but also part of the socialist. They, they consider that actually uh, we, we have talked too much to the French population that we need to fit with uh, economic competition because of the European uh, level. So it is probably all of that, which, is, which are the long-term explanation outside, of course, the most important one, which is probably a, over the case of France, which is a crisis, a crisis of social democracy in Europe. It is not only in France. It's not only in France that social democracy has so many difficulties in talking to citizens what exactly does it mean to be left on today. Uh, everyone is going to say you uh, left is social justice, redistribution, but once that you say so, it doesn't tell anything about the means of social justice, it doesn't tell anything about the recipients of social justice, who deserve, who merit, who um, needs social justice. And it is probably some fundamental questions that not only the French, but also the other European social democrat parties are in difficult position to respond to those questions. So uh, the, the other thing, <coughs> the other thing, <coughs> sorry, the other thing which is probably more short-term consideration, it is obviously the Macron factor. Because when Macron was elected, Macron was saying, I'm going to take the best of the right, the best of the left. And uh, during the COVID, particularly during the COVID, uh, uh, with the whatever it cost, the, the position of Macron, which is that supporting French economy, supporting French citizens, whatever it cost. So this is a message that probably um, respond, respond to part of the left, which is the center left, which is the, 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 the state needs to be there in case of major crises, and so actually this is what Macron did during the, 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 the COVID. So all of that created probably a, a spiral, a negative spiral for the, for the socialist candidate. Because actually when you go long before the election, Anne Hidalgo, she had a very good profile. Actually, she managed to be re-elected the mayor of Paris, which is not nothing actually to get elected mayor of the capital of the country. She was also serving a position that was at the intersection between social justice, ecology, and citizenship, democracy, ecology, and social justice, public service, public sector. So actually it is quite, quite a good position uh, for the center left. So she had a good profile. And, and also the other thing that she never get some uh, responsibilities at the national level. She has been never minister before. She has not been a member of a cabinet before. So she was quite fresh, quite new. And also, she had also one positive aspect that was that she's a mayor. Uh, you know that in France, the mayor is the most popular uh, political uh, level. That when you are asking the French if they trust politics, the only level politics they trust in is actually the mayor, the local level of the mayor, because lo the mayor is the incarnation of uh, uh, responding to concrete uh, uh, issues, questions, problems. So actually, before the election, she had quite a good profile. Uh, some people would tell you that the way she has been selected maybe has not created a very positive mood, she was elected, she was nominated socialist candidate, not with a primary. It was not really an open primary. It was a primary, it was just a vote of the party members. And we've got only two candidates, uh, Anne Hidalgo and uh, Stéphane Le Foll, a former minister of François Hollande. But that was not uh, like a proper open primary, but Five years ago, Benoît Hamon was selected with an open primary. And it was, again, a very, very difficult result. So I don't think it is the mechanism 
of selecting an Hidalgo. That was the, the, the problem. It's much more question, fundamental question. What does it mean to be left when you have Emmanuel Macron, which is telling whatever it costs during the COVID, what exactly it means to be left when um, uh, Emmanuel Macron is also saying that the state should be, should be strong. Uh, Macron is not only saying that the state should be strong, but also should be efficient. So I think it is those fundamental difficulties that explain the such such an amazing collapse. I'm telling an amazing collapse because it is just amazing that the source is coordinated in France is getting less than some perfectly unknown candidates. It is absolutely amazing. So it is probably telling something about the situation of the Socialist Party and 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 probably that we have seen in that election a complete switch um, in the different weights inside the left. Uh, the socialists, over the last decades, they were habituated to be the dominant actor of the left when the communists or the ecologists, they were the minorities inside the left. When on today, the situation is completely different. La France Insoumise, the party of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, is actually the dominant one. So I'm just going to, to do so. Sorry. And, Sorry. Um, oh, wow. While you protect yourself <laughs> against uh, the Kenny Cool in uh, Paris, I'll, I'll get to my second question. Um, and Bruno, which is, begins from La France yes. uh, Insoumise, which is now, as you say, the um, principal a party on the left in France. And uh, before the elections to the Assemblée Nationale, I uh, was the core of a new alliance formed to contest the elections, NUP, uh, La Nouvelle Union Populaire Ecologique et Sociale, uh, which the Socialist Party, the Greens and others mm. joined, and obtained quite a respectable result in the uh, parliamentary elections. Indeed, now Macron, re-elected as president, finds it quite difficult uh, to secure a majority in the Assemblée Nationale because of the result um, in the parliamentary elections. Now, a few years ago, Bruno, obviously there were the Gilets Jaunes manifestations in, in uh, France. Since then, the idea of trying to find a way of bringing together the ecological and the social, rather than those being counterposed, has been a lively discussion on the French left. And that phrase, ecological et social, is clearly in the name of the new alliance. Do you think that this uh, may offer a way to renew social democracy and the left in general in France? And does it have any lessons for social democracy elsewhere in Europe, where, as you say, there are many challenges too? I think that um, the creation of la NUP, that new left coalition, it is probably one of the major surprises of that election, um, the, the strategic actor has been Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the far left uh, candidate at the presidential election, that for the second time was doing a very good result in the presidential election. In, the, in 2017, actually got nearly 20 when this year he got 22% of the share of the vote, so that was very good result. Not only it was very good result, but on the day of the election, on the election night of the first round, at one stage, we eventually, we were thinking that maybe he would qualify for the second round. It was not a big margin for, qualifying, for the qualification for the second round. And I think that what happened is uh, in few days, in very few days, that the other actors of the left, the socialists and the ecologists, just admitted their defeat, actually, which is just to admit that the dominant actor is now La France Insoumise and Jean-Luc Mélenchon. That obviously, that recognition has obviously facilitated the creation of La NUP. And um, so they, 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 there was... As you said, there, there was for many years, actually, uh, some tendencies within the left voters to call for unity. During the electoral campaign this year, 
there was a popular primary. It was a citizen initiative coming from the left. They were asking and they wanted to oblige the candidates of the left for the presidential election to unify. Uh, they did that popular uh, primary that was actually quite uh, quite a successful in the electorate. There was nearly half a million of voters that decided to select Christian Taubira, a former left minister um, that finally decided to abandon uh, before um, before the election, before the presidential election, but you could see that there was obvious signs within the left that was asking for unity. I know that asking for unity, it is, it doesn't say anything, because it's not, it's not because you have one candidate that there is a unified program. But that was a clear sign that inside the left there was an expectation to respond to Macron, to the Macron phenomenon, in, in getting, going to more unity of the left. And all that context probably facilitated the creation of la NUP. When Jean-Luc Mélenchon said to the, to the other actors, we are, going to get uni we are going to go unified to the legislative elections, but they will be, you will get your own parliamentary group. We are not going to absorb you. Okay, so, so the, the, and, uh, the, the relative success of, of la NUP can be explained because we have a majority system and that the majority system for the parliamentary election, if you have only one candidate of the left in every constituency, then it is much easier for that candidate to, the, to get qualified for the second round. So that's the situation nowadays. We know that the NUP is actually not fully unified. The way that the socialists, les insoumis, and the ecologists are looking to the socioeconomic issues is not exactly the same, but it is a very recent, very new political construction. It is a new political object, la NUP, and I think it's too early. It's really too early to, to evaluate the future of that. Is it going to create something new, uh, which is a, a feeling inside the left, particularly the young deputies, the, young, the new generation of MPs that knows that they have been elected because of that unity? Is it going to create a feeling of... Uh, um, identification to la NUP. Maybe that in five years, a new generation of deputies is going to say, I am, I am NUP, I'm not, so, I'm not socialist or ecologist, I am NUP. So I think that's the major challenge for the NUP, which is to, to, to create a feeling of unity, not only to win seats, but on public policy issues. Up to now, it is just too recent. The parliamentary session just started um, for the moment, we, we can see that there is a little diversity inside the NUP, but they are keeping their unity towards Macron. And you know that Macron would like to attract the centre-left by saying, oh, I'm going to navigate because they are not an absolute majority. I'm going to navigate between centre-left and centre-right to create absolute majority, sometimes with the centre-right or the centre-left, left left and right, the Macron message, actually, up to now. Uh, the NUP, and particularly the socialists or the ecologists, resist to that attraction from Macron. And let's see, let's see. We are not, we are not yet, we are not, we have not been facing yet the very hard time of the of the legislature when we are going to talk about reforming the pension system, particularly when we are going to talk about. Uh, uh, the finance law tax. Uh, Macron said that there will be no new tax. He's not going to increase deficits. He's not going to increase tax. But we know that the socioeconomic situation of France is going to get harder, harder and harder because of inflation, because of the way the conditions that France is low is uh, um, getting some loans on the market. It's going to be more difficult for France. 
the depth is going to, to get higher. And so I'm, I'm absolutely certain that very difficult uh, decisions are going to be faced by France. So we will see. But for the moment, I will say that it has created something quite positive inside the left, not only, not only the left parties, but also for the left voters, which is finally, finally, at the end, a positive message, finally. Because the situation of the left since uh, the end of François Hollande, I would say 2016, when François Hollande just renounced to run again. So it is now six, seven years that the left is, is in a very, very difficult situation. So finally, we have a positive, the left has a positive Okay, well, let's message. finish on that positive um, message, um, Bruno, with the, uh, the, the prospect of a future which might be one of a pluralist left, as Leonor Jospin talked about many years ago, um, and um, is indeed, and is in, is indeed no, yes, a true. challenge not just for France, uh, but elsewhere across Europe, where other social democratic and radical parties have to find ways uh, to liaise and deal with each other positively. Many thanks, uh, Bruno, for speaking to me today. I um, think that... Uh, our time is up, um, but I've really appreciated our discussion. Yeah. And um, 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 we will watch over the coming years uh, how this new alliance develops, as you say. Many thanks, Bruno, for talking to me. Many thanks to our viewers and listeners. Um, uh, you've been listening yes, to right. and seeing uh, Bruno Cotre, uh, political scientist from Sciences Po in uh, France and an expert in French elections. Thank you and goodbye.